The California State Senate has passed a bill that would allow men who engage in gay sex with minors to escape registering as a sex offender based on the discretion of the judge. And I kid you not, this legislation was introduced by this guy, Scott Weiner, which does not surprise me at all given his name and appearance. Like, yo, can I get a physiognomy check? For those not familiar, the ancient Greeks theorized that you could accurately infer someone's character from their appearance and aesthetics. This is called physiognomy. And it might sound crazy, then you kind of look at the type of people who are doing things like this and it sort of starts to make sense. Like there's something almost inherently left wing about ugliness because it represents subjectiveness. It represents a sort of aesthetic entropy where there's no such thing as objective beauty or objective good. And we will make ourselves as ugly as possible to prove that. And that's just a more complicated way of pointing out that every leftist who has ever come after me to try to get me deplatformed has been ugly and slug-like, just totally gross, no self-respect. But anyways, this legislation was supposedly crafted on behalf of equal rights for LGBT people and for ending discrimination. So we'll talk about why that's ridiculous, how we got to this point in the first place, what this all means for our country. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. I've got some good news and some bad news before we get started. Something very epic and then something very sad. So I'll tell you the epic news first, then I'll tell you the sad news at the end so we can stay relatively high energy throughout the video. But, uh, you know, I'll put up a timestamp so you can skip the news and get right into the topic if you'd like. But basically, as some of you know, the two year anniversary of Heck Off Commie is October 10th, and I've decided that we should do something to celebrate. And so we're going to rent out a venue and have an epic party. It's called Hocktoberfest because Hock and October. Very high IQ branding, but anyways, due to the fact that lots of Antifa type people would want to sabotage this, we can't give out any information here, so there's going to be a form in the description that we need you to fill out, and from there we'll send you all the information that you need. So if this is something that you'd be interested in attending, fill out the form. That's the only way that you'll get updates on the epic party, what's happening, when and where, etc. And to the aforementioned Antifa types, I would advise you to just stay away because not only do I have a whole team of people who will be vetting the prospective attendees, but I also have a whole team of people doing private security, but they're getting paid to cover me and my people. So if you try to pick a fight, unfortunately, I cannot guarantee your safety as I am not responsible for the actions of other people. But, you know, we'll try to just get you thrown out in a timely fashion. Maybe use your head to open the door or something. That's a joke. That's a joke. But, yeah, if you want to celebrate with me and the boys, fill out the form. It's going to be epic. And it's important. It's important that we do things like that. Because if we're not actually engaging and networking with each other in person, then we're just a bunch of dudes, you know, watching videos. And uh, being successful as a movement requires more than that. It requires an established infrastructure. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to work towards that, doing stuff like this. And it's made possible by you guys, not only by watching and sharing, Sharing the videos, but especially by signing up for memberships at heckoffcommy.com. So if you're not signed up already, I'd highly recommend it. Not only because it supports the channel, obviously, and allows us to keep doing what we're doing, but also I think it's good for you too, which is why I'm not even asking you to sign up. I know that you'll sign up eventually. I will get you eventually. It's not a matter of if, but rather when, because, you know, back when I was watching conservatives on YouTube, I used to want to know, oh, you know, what books are they reading? I want to submit my own video ideas to them, and I want to ask them questions directly. And I want to talk to other people in the audience. And so when I made the website, I made that possible. Like, you can do all of that on the platform. I think it's a really good platform. And I'm going to start adding a lot more exclusive content to it as well. I'll experiment with some different things. But we already have a good amount of stuff on there right now. And, uh, you know, without that, we couldn't do what we do. And it's only going to keep going. And a lot of people think, oh, well, it's just videos. That's not going to change anything. And I can understand that. But it's really a lot more than that because it's influence. And if you agree with even 75% of what we talk about on this channel, then that should give you optimism. Because not only do we reach tens of thousands of people every week, but we've got people in local and even state level governments throughout the country. We've got people with a lot more clout than we currently have who are influenced by us. And I can even tell you for a fact that one of the best speeches at the RNC was at least partially influenced by a video from this channel. And I don't say this to be conceited, you know, like Trump. I, I say this not in a braggadocious way, but I say this because we are growing stronger and more influential every day. And mainly because I saw a comment recently that said, oh, John, this isn't doing anything. You have to run for office. And I was quite off put by that. I was like, hey, you're not doing anything, man, you know? The point is that we are doing something and we're doing it better than most other people. And the best part is that we're doing it with integrity. We're not backed by these big donors. We're backed by the people who watch the videos. Like I work for you guys and we even have better engagement than the people who are backed by the big donors. And then occasionally, you know, I'll take a sponsor. But even then, like I don't change what I'm talking about and I never will. 
That's why we're effective, because we're real. And very few other people can say that. But I've noticed that the people who can say that are always the people who are the most effective. And it might seem silly because we're doing this on the same platform that has funny cat videos and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter because we're still doing it. So it's a very exciting time. I'm optimistic about the future, and I have it on good authority that we should all be optimistic about the future. So support the channel if you can. Fill out the form in the description because I would love nothing more than to celebrate with you guys, and I'm excited for the future. Speaking of the future, forgot this one. Uh, I'm going to Alaska later this week to visit a friend of mine. So after that, I'll be on the road covering something for you guys, but it will be a short while before the next video, but you can follow my Twitter for updates. So that's the good news. That's the epic news. All because some guy was just like, dude, this doesn't do anything. Had to go off a little bit. Determined gamer moment, optimistic gamer moment. But anyways, we'll go over the details of the legislation now, but I do have to preface by saying that I really don't have anything personally against gay people or LGBT people, but that doesn't mean that I can't criticize their actions. And I have a lot of gay fans and I've spoken with many of them, and they all agree with me on the vast majority of things, including most of what I say about even LGBT-related things, believe it or not. And the reason that I bring this up isn't because I'm like, um, <laughs> please don't cancel me, but rather because the Overton window of discourse in this country surrounding social issues has exiled social conservatives whose opinions would have been mainstream just 20 years ago and has labeled them as these hateful people. And so I don't want anyone watching to think that I'm coming at this from a bad place or that I hate people or that I have ill will towards them because I really don't. Uh, but people like to say I do because because it's easier than breaking down what I'm actually saying. So anyways, a lot of people online have been saying, oh, well, this bill legalizes pedophilia, and that's just not true, but it's not exactly something that's moving in the opposite direction from that. And the problem is that if we say, well, it legalizes pedophilia, and then people are like, oh, it does, and then they look it up, they find out that that's not the case. Well, it's, you know, it might make them let their guard down, but what it actually does is still pretty bad. So basically, the law in California right now says that if you commit statutory rape, which for those unfamiliar is when an adult engages in sexual activity with a minor, you will at the very least be registered as a sex offender, unless, it was vaginal and she's over the age of 14 and you are within 10 years of her age. Remember that we still subscribe to the archaic belief on this channel that only girls have vaginas. So in those cases, it's up to the judge whether to register you as a sex offender, which means that if you're 25 and you have vaginal sex with a 14 year old girl, then you're a sex offender. But if you're 23, well, then it's up to the judge to decide if you're a sex offender. So this law is already pretty questionable, but it does actually make a little bit of sense. And it's actually for that reason that this new bill is so ridiculous. And so we'll get into that in a second. But basically what this new New bill is saying, along with removing all mentions of he or she from the current law to make way for the new gender neutral, the person, is that now we're including non-vaginal sex as well, because only including vaginal sex discriminates against LGBT people because they're more likely to engage in oral, anal, or digital sex and not vaginal sex. And so the law is discriminating against them. So now the judge will have the discretion in all cases involving minors over 14 and adults within 10 years of them who have sodomized them, done stuff orally with them or digitally with them, which doesn't mean like with technology. It just means uh, with your hands, digital coming from the Latin word digitus, which just means finger. See, you learn something new every day on this channel. So uh, anyways, under the new law, a 24-year-old man could sodomize a 14-year-old boy and a California judge would get to decide if that man should be considered a sex offender. Now, let's jump back to the old law. The reason that the judge would have the discretion to make an adult male register as a sex offender or not in cases of vaginal sex is because that can and often does result in pregnancy. And if that young woman becomes pregnant, it would be much harder for that man to find and hold a job if he's a registered sex offender, which means that it would be harder for him to provide for the mother and for the child. And again, the judge gets to make that decision. So it's not as though they're just totally off the hook, but we can at least kind of understand the reason for that. Now, the problem with that translating into this new law is that speaking very frankly, sodomy doesn't create human life. It actually decreases human life because it results in STDs and different cancers developing, but that's a topic for another time. The point now being that sex between a man and a woman will never be equal to sex between two men because sex between a man and a woman has the potential to create human life. And they'll say, well, you know, sometimes people are infertile, so there's really no difference. And it doesn't matter because it is designed to produce that outcome. And the vast majority of the time it will, whereas that will never happen as a result of two men sodomizing each other. And, you know, we can get into the high IQ Aristotelian arguments from natural law. We can get into the lower IQ. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Gosh, damn it. But this is just the reality of human beings. And it's totally uncontroversial. And it's because of that, that this new law is problematic because the old law said that if you do anything sexual with a young girl, you're a sex offender. Unless she's 14 or older, you're within 10 years of her and you two had sex, like then maybe the judge gets to decide that you're not a sex offender, depending 
depending on the circumstances. She might be pregnant. We talked about why that is, because it can result in the pregnancy. But now it's saying, no, that discriminates against LGBT people. The judge should have discretion for any type of sexual activity. And what that says is that the person should have the opportunity to not register as a sex offender, not because they might have to get a job to provide for a child, but because maybe molesting the child really wasn't that big of a deal. That's literally what this is about. There is no other reason. It is about equating heterosexuality with homosexuality on a metaphysical level and every other initial in the acronym as well. It's not about equality under the law. They already had that. It's about reflecting their belief that the metaphysics of homosexuality are identical to the metaphysics of heterosexuality, or in other words, that there's no significant difference between the two. Which makes sense because in their worldview, all expressions of sexual desire are good and should be normal so long as there's consent. But they don't define consent the same way that you and I would, right? Their definition of consent is based in power, not rational capacity. In other words, they believe that in their communist utopia, adults should be able to have sex with children since the power dynamic between adults and children would be gone since everyone would be equal, right? That's what they believe. So you can see what happens when we go from objective morality to consent-based morality to, well, what does consent even mean? It's it's about normalizing. It's about marching down the field. It's not about equality. The law already applied equally to everyone, regardless of sexual orientation. If a 23-year-old gay man had sex with a 14-year-old girl, he'd have the opportunity to not be registered as a sex offender, just like if a 23-year-old straight man sodomized a 14-year-old boy, he would be put on the list, regardless of sexual orientation. Because it's not about your sexual orientation, it's about your actions. But they don't care about equality under the law. They care about special privileges that accommodate themselves. They care about having their specific proclivities accommodated by the law, which is why they're saying, well, when LGBT people molest children, they can't always do it vaginally, so it's not fair to not give them the chance to not be sex offenders. In other words, this law seeks to ease the plight of the child predator, not protect children. And you might be scratching your head about that example that I just gave to prove the point uh, where the straight man sodomized the little boy. You might be thinking, well, now, wouldn't that make him gay? No, no, not according to the left. Now what they're doing is separating homosexuality from pedophilia. They're trying to rebrand it as its own sexual orientation. And the reason for that is throughout LGBT culture, their literature, their art, their movies, and especially their behavior, for whatever reason, there is an extremely difficult and inconvenient recurring motif of preying upon and sexualizing children. I would like to talk more about this here, but I don't think I can because because it's a very sensitive topic. Maybe you can ask me about it on the website or something, but I will say that if you are going to remove morality from society and leave nothing left except divine logic by which to be governed, then eventually you will be able to rationalize every behavior, including the sexual exploitation of children. And not coincidentally, as our society has lost its morality, we're seeing the academics and intellectuals come to explain to us why, well, actually, it's okay to sexually exploit children. It's even good for them. You disagree? Um, source, please. Do you have a study that proves sexualizing children is bad? Um, where's your peer-reviewed citation. Yeah. How compelling. This is where we are right now. And it's getting worse. Think about where we were 20 years ago, five years ago, compared to where we are now. We keep ceding ground to these people. It's not going to end well for us, which is why it's important that we keep our morality and our convictions, because ultimately, uh, and here's something that gives me great optimism for the future, no coalition of people who promote degenerate, unhealthy lifestyles, nihilism, obesity, ugliness, etc. no coalition of people like that could ever be sustainable, let alone successful in the long run, which means that it's our job to stay disciplined, to resist the vices of modern culture. Don't let them make you numb. Resist the drugs, the porn, the sedation of modern life. Be the man that your grandfather or even great-grandfather was. Maybe if he wasn't a good guy, then be the man who would have fit in with that generation of men. That's why it's important for us to have influence and to build networks. And that actually gets us into the sad news, which I learned yesterday, because someone who is familiar with the people who were in Portland a couple weekends ago reached out to me and told me that apparently Aaron Danielson, who was targeted, stalked, and executed by an Antifa member in cold blood, was actually a big fan of the channel. He was a big supporter of Heck Off Kami, and I guess that uh, the guy who was with him when he died also was. And so, you know, I'll be reaching out to him sometime soon. But like hearing that was incomprehensibly humbling. Um, and that was one of the moments where everything like really became real to me. Not only the channel and the influence that we have, but also like the reality of the situation that we're in. Like not only was he a good God-fearing patriot, but he was also like one of us. I mean, you know, most of us are good God-fearing patriots too, but you get what I'm saying. It just really took the wind out of me to hear that. And so we're actually going to get a picture of him or something for the studio uh, so that we can make sure that he's not just a headline or a talking point, but he's like a real person with a face and with conviction uh, and with love for his country. And uh, all of that was taken from him by someone who is now also dead. But I would imagine that Aaron Danielson is probably in a much better, much better place now, being a good pious man versus the man who murdered him in cold blood, who's probably in a not so good 
place as of right now. Not for me to decide, but I'd imagine that such is the case. And that's the ultimate state of this conflict. We will win because we have good on our side. And if we don't win here, then we will win in the end because we've got goal line defense up there. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised to learn that the true standard of good uh, is a much higher bar to meet than the one set in California. Hey guys, if you like this video, guess what I'm going to ask you to do? Is it A, leave a thumbs up, B, leave a comment, C, subscribe to the channel, D, turn on post notifications so you get notified when I post, or E, share it with a friend? Do, 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 eh, na, 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 eh. Plot twist, it's actually F, the hidden letter that you couldn't even see, but you should have known intuitively, which is all of the above. You should do all of the above, A through E. As, as under the umbrella of F is what you should do. Yes. But thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.